Once we have time, then we'll kind of get back to those and answer as many as we have time. All right, so we're going to quickly go through the agenda of what we're going to cover today. Um, so we're going to go through a quick company introduction. Um, we're going to be talking about some of the applications, um, but we're, we're going to be focusing more on the applications on how the batteries get used in those applications. So we'll, we'll talk more further on that. We're going to talk about the uh, thin plate pure lead or TPPL technology. We're going to learn quite a bit of that. And of course, the energy storage portfolio. Um, we're gonna talk about all the offerings that are available now and you can purchase um, um, and size them and you know whatnot. And finally, we're gonna go through uh, system solutions that we offer with, with those batteries. And again, um, throughout, throughout the, you know, the PPT, feel free to ask any questions away and, and I'll, tr I'll try to keep an eye on them. Okay, um, <clears throat> so late December of 08, uh, Alpha Enersys or Alpha NL Bike Power was acquired by Enersys. Um, so for those of you that don't know who Enersys is, um, they are a, um, a global leader in stored energy solutions that manufactures batteries for all sorts of, um, of I reserve power and motive power, uh, um, such as telecom, broadband, industrial, you know, renewable, data centers, just to name a few. Um, and you know, you uh, perhaps you may not even know them um, by the name, but you may know them by um, the fact that you may have already benefited in some of these products, you know, some of these batteries, um, you know, because they they are uh meant for like forklifts um in fleet vehicles you know cargo vehicles um and things like that funny story is you know for for the last um i don't know 12 years that we've had the same forklift um um here at outback power um in the warehouse you know we've serviced that battery in the forklift you know year after year and we've all kind of picked at it but it didn't really click on me until recently when I looked at it again and I just realized that, hey, this is an Enersys battery. You know, so all this time um, we've had this uh, um, um, Enersys battery. So who would have thought, right? So check your truck, you know, check your um, other devices and who knows, maybe you have a Enersys battery in there. Okay, so uh, here are some of the other uh, systems that we do enable, um, you know, um, apart from all the energy storage products that we manufacture across many industrial um, applications, we also make storage uh, products for defense, space, and medical equipment. Um, in fact, uh, recently we shipped thousands of our cyclone batteries um, um, uh, for the ventilators devices. So, on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a a device that kind of looks like a ventilator that are kind of um, you know deployed all over the US right now to help folks that you know have some breathing issues so so we yeah so we just deployed thousands of those uh, recently so it you know makes makes me feel better you know that we're we're uh, trying to do our best and in, in to help uh, you know during these times And uh, on side of that, you know, here's a project that Enersys is working with um, with NASA uh, to develop a battery system that will back up a critical um, electronic powering the steering of the launch aboard system on this new uh, spacecraft as an option that was not available in the previous spacecraft models. So this is exciting being part of this project since, you know, it's the first time man has ever gone back to space since Apollo 17 in, in 1972. So it's um, it's an honor, you know, for all of us to be part of that. Um, and this shows, you know, how um, uh, 
uh, how important it is for, for us to meet this high quality standards um, as it could save lives. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the renewable applications. And but before we do that, um, we do have a poll that um, I'd like to I'd like to start here. And feel free to just answer as many you know as as you uh, get the chance. Give it a minute. Okay, so that's been a minute and let's go ahead and close that guy. Okay, so it looks like we're, we have a 22% um, none, one to five, 27%, 11%, uh, five to, five to 10 and 41% 10 uh, or plus. So as shy of half, half of us, you know, are, are going to be doing installs 10 or more for the next year. So that's, that's pretty good. Alrighty, thanks for doing that. Okay. Um, I had a couple questions about um, if you guys are going to get a copy of the slides, and yes, we're going to make this available for um, all of you the, that made the attendance. And in case you don't, um, I'll leave my email at the end of the deck so you can kind of keep that as a reference and feel free to give me an email. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, over, over the last few decades, the solar application um, has been, you know, defined and it seems like every decade um, it, it, it gets redefined into something new, you know, just because it's, it's been a moving target with all these changes that um, um, have been happening. You know, in, in the early days, of solar plus storage, you know, you basically had two applications. You had your traditional off-grader, you know, that lived in, in the mountains or in the, in, in the woods and had a small cabin that was off-grid, right? Um, and then shortly after, um, we had the grid, uh, the grid direct with battery backup system. So that was the second most common application. However, in recent years, um, the market has introduced new applications that involve smarter um, energy management and ways for the batteries to get used. Um, but you know, for for our focus today is not the applications themselves, but rather how are the batteries uh, being used in such applications? So, for example, in a self-consumption or behind a meter. Um, uh, system is when the the homeowner is not allowed to sell back to the uh, to the power, um, but instead the solar power that gets harvested during the day it it, it gets used to con to consume the uh, house loads during the day and then the access will charge the batteries, and at night when the batteries are full, we'll then we'll take that stored energy and feed it back to the house to consume that uh, until the batteries are discharged and then the whole new cycle happens you know, the next day. 
So these are just two, you know, typical applications, but there are a few, a few others that many of you have heard, such as, you know, self-consumption, AC, uh, AC coupling, time of use, tier rate structures. Um, you know, all these, uh, all these systems have different ways, uh, different profiles on how the batteries um, get used. Um, and what the battery sees on the other side is, well, they get cycled very deeply and very often. They stay in a partial state of charge for long periods of time. And really, this uh, partial state of charge is, is the number one battery killer. You know, um, when, when you don't use the proper battery or the proper uh, uh, practices, this, you know, this uh, practice can definitely shorten the life of the battery, um, which we'll, we'll touch more base on this um, here in the future. Um, <clears throat> various discharge and charge rates, you know, so you can be charging, you know, at 100 amps one, one time and you can drop down to 10 amps and back up to 200 amps. So, so the rates vary up and down. Uh, same with, uh, you know, discharges and you know, some uh, some batteries don't. Not, um, they have to be capped as to what is the maximum uh, uh, current they can accept or discharge. So then you may have to modify your equipment to accommodate for that. So then you lose some of that extra power that you could be used um, um, if by not having that battery that could accept a higher charge rate. Um, and and also, you know, batteries. You know, they go through extreme stress. Um, and miss uh, maintenance charges. You know, that's just just the uh, the the way it goes, right? Um, okay, moving on. So here are two uh, real system examples taken from our Optics RE monitoring platform. So the top graph um, is a perfect example of what an off-grid system that gets cycled on a daily basis looks like. Um, so notice the, the red bars there um, <clears throat> uh, versus the green bars. So the red bars is the energy taken out from the batteries during the night. So you know, you imagine the, the green bars is when the sun comes out during the day and it can, you know, comes down sunset, and then the homeowners come in during the night and uh, in the evening, use the battery power, um, and then they'll stay discharged until the next morning. You know, and same cycle happens all over, um, all over again. So this is what you would consider a off-grid daily cycle, you know, battery. So if I was this homeowner, you know, I would go with a battery that has the highest cycle life, um, and uh, so that it, I know that if I install a battery bank, it's going to last me the most um, that I would want it to based on my conditions. Um, the next one down here is standby backup. So this is what you would, you know, be a uh, pretty traditional battery backup um, system where the batteries are typically stay maintained in a trickle charge or a float charge, you know, 24-7. Um, at 100% state of charge until there is a uh, power outage or a, um, a power disruption. It's when the batteries will kick in and back up those essential loads in your house. You know, so here on April 3rd, you, you can see that we have a very small power outage, you know, just a, um, maybe a flicker and it was only for 30 minutes or so, maybe less, um, and then uh, batteries came back up. You know, it, it was just a small discharge. Batteries came back up. Um, on April 4th, you see that there was a longer, deeper discharge, um, where you know the batteries got discharged down to uh, under 50%. So, um, which is pretty acceptable for these type of applications. So again, this kind of gives you a, a overview. A profile of how batteries get used, um, you know, based on the um, applications they're in. Okay, so in summary, 
what makes the most sense in renewables today? Um, so if, if you had to make a wish list for, you know, what is the perfect battery, perhaps you might have one of these in your list. Well, I want a battery that can provide maximum energy throughput or cycle life, right? Um, be economically viable for customers, you know, not, not just my sales channel, but also my homeowners and installers. They, you know, they have to be affordable. Two is, or three, uh, can operate in any extreme temperatures. You know, um, here is a picture of a desert, you know, in Arizona, perhaps. Um, that's, you know, one uh, profile. Um, and Alaska is going to be very different. In, in South and Mexico, it's going to be a lot uh, different as well. So, you know, one battery should be able to adjust in many different applications for temperature. Um, uh, the ability to change op, uh, operations based on regulatory changes with minimal negative effect. This is a big one. We, you know, we did we do talk a lot about uh, with our customers on this one, where they have a battery-based system, um, and they have a net meter agreement that is going to end in 12 months or less than that, and after that ends, after that program ends, then they want to go to behind a meter consumption or self consumption. And they are interested in switching their batteries to a, a battery model that, that can support um, those applications. You know, it can be on float, it can be in partial state of charge, it can cycle, it can charge fast, recharge fast. You know, those are some of the things that we've heard from the voice of the customer, um, which, you know, because of that, we do have uh, a couple of very exciting new products um, that, um, um, that will be um, uh, going over today. Um, the other one is, can, you know, can safety, uh, safely transport uh, com uh, uh, commercially without special hazmat um, uh, certifications, you know? Lead, you know, it's been trans. It's been in the. It's been transported for decades, you know, sometimes centuries. So, they're considered non-hazmat um, on, you know, the AGM VRLA batteries. Um, so there's no special, um, you know, practices that need to be done um, for uh, flooded uh, lead acid batteries or lithium batteries. Those have their own type of rating with their own practices. Um, but this is focused more on the lead acid side. So, um, you know, we can say that um, these batteries uh, do not require anything special on that. Um, <clears throat> the other one is uh, they can be physically easy to install without safety risk to a person. You know, um, we, you know, on the bigger systems, um, some manufacturers, they do provide tools for, you know, lifting tools and, and, um, and lifting methods for you to make sure that you install these battery systems in a safely manner and in a timely manner and without anyone getting hurt. And my favorite, and, and many of you may also be, you know, getting into the aesthetics of this. You know, I, I know I can be a little bit of a nerd when, when it comes to aesthetics and, and you know, uh, uh, spiffing my my um, uh, garage and with LED light strips and other things, you know, people are want that look. You know, they they want their energy system to look like an like um, a, a, like an appliance. You know, their fridge, they're they're pretty cool looking, and they don't want this clunky box, you know, with wires everywhere. You know, they want a nice, soft, you know, cool looking uh, device that can be mounted on the garage door. So that's, you know, all these items are probably in, in your wish list and, and probably many more. Okay, um, so just how we talked about how, how the a renewable market has been evolving from the traditional off-grid to the 
smart energy management system, battery technology have also followed suit to keep up with the demand. Um, so from uh, from the beginnings, perhaps some of you, or maybe I've heard or know someone that have used golf cart batteries, uh, perhaps um, uh, forklift batteries, you know, I use them for, for off-grid use. You know, this, this was the go-to method, you know, or, or the go-to battery back in the day, you know, in the 80s, in the 90s. Um, even recently, you know, the, I've, I still talk to people that still have these batteries for 10 plus years and they're very happy with them. Um, and, you know, for that reason, why they're, uh, they were being used, you know, they were, they, they had some, you know, drawbacks because they do require um, a lot of maintenance, they're heavy, you know, they, they, they take a lot of uh, floor space because they have to be, you know, upright and, and you're gonna have to jump from one place to the other to, to read their voltages and whatnot. So it's a big mess, but you know, we've, we've gone a long way since then. Um, in the early 2010s is when we first introduced our very first front terminal AGM VRLA battery um, with lead alloy. You know, this, this was a very great battery, offered 1800 cycles, um, uh, maintenance free, had a, you know, it could be installed in our IBR racks. It was really nice. Our customers loved it. Um, but, you know, we wanted more cycle life out of the batteries. So then we came out with the lead alloy plus carbon battery, um, AG and VLA as well, um, which was the same footprint as the previous one, but just with added um, a newer technology. So offers twice as much to cycle life. Uh, recently, we came out with the thin plate pure lead or TPPL um, a technology, but with an added carbon in a negative plate. Um, and we'll get more into this, um, so I won't uh, uh, spill the beans here yet, um, as that's gonna be a big topic. Um, so without further ado, let's do that actually. Okay, so what is TPPL a technology? So uh, before I, I go any further, I made a, a note here on this slide. If you notice at the bottom right hand corner, there's a square that says modern marvels. So if you guys don't recall, uh, Disney Channel made a show on uh, uh, modern marvels probably in the 2000s, I would say, um, and Energis was one of them. So we don't have time today, but you know, on your laser time, if you have some spare time, um, then perhaps go online and you know, um, go on YouTube and then search Modern Marvels, um, Energis batteries, and then that'll be the first uh, uh, video that shows up. And it's really cool. I, uh, I really do recommend it. Okay, so getting into what is TPPL a technology? So really, there's um, uh, there are three parts to understand what TPPL a technology is. So the first part is the thickness of how the plates are are being made. Um, each each plate is is made. Um, about to one uh, mil thickness versus a traditional is five to seven millimeters. So that tells you a big difference, you know. Um, so between a, a traditional five to seven, you know, you can fit what, like five to seven of these in the same footprint. So you can pack a heck a lot more of these um, thin plates on the same uh, footprint or jar of the battery. So what does that mean? Well, it means that because you have more of these uh, plates stacked together, you gain about 20% more energy density because of the extra plates, you know, the surface area, um, you gain 20% more. The other one is that you get a higher charge acceptance and discharge because of the thin plates, there's less resistance, and they're compacted very tight. So 
so the current will just flow right through without it, without any um, you know creating any heat or any uh, negative effect um, which that, that's going to be one of the benefits that we'll be um, uh, talking about second part of this is the pure lead so the pure lead uh, refers to the purity of the raw material used in the construction of the grid um, so the plates you know there's no calcium there's no antimony um, that that will require uh, mechanical uh, compression which will reduce the grid corrosion so first of all is you know this this raw uh, lead is not a recycled lead that we buy from you know recyclers this is this is a freshly raw mined uh, uh, lead that we buy from from um, you know from the miners and then we molded that in, into our grids and, and and form the plates so you know and it is about 99.9 percent .9 pure lead so there's so there's almost no impurities um so that allows you know the the user to take advantage of that um long life because there's no um a, a difference and um in metals and it, it, it will not corrode. Now the third part of this is the state-of-the-art automated manufacturing process. So how the how the jars um, are made and 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 how the the thin plates are compressed and then inserted into the jar itself without breaking them. You know if you handle a um, a lead plate just on its own, it's kind of like a pasta noodle. You know you 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 lift it up and then the sides will just droop down and eventually break. So, you know, that's why only state of the art um, machines can handle these bat th these cells and then compress them um, and stack them um, so that you know they they don't lose their integrity over its lifetime. Okay, so here are the uh, <clears throat> the four core benefits of the high, of the high purity and high grade materials of TPPO um, uh, technologies. So first, self uh, so uh, the low self discharge. So because of the purity metals, you know the batteries will not discharge at a higher rate compared to other batteries that um, have alloys. So you're looking at between 24, volt, uh, uh, 24 months for pure lead versus a six month for a um, lead alloy battery. Low flow current. So, so the batteries will let, uh, use less energy uh, or current to keep the batteries up um, during float. So essentially it will give you a less total cost of ownership because of you're using less resources. Less corrosion rate. Um, uh, about 25% longer than an AGM battery because of the metals. And the uh, large surface area, um, the lower resistance uh, will have a greater low temp. So, so these, uh, met, uh, you know, these plates, because of the purities, they uh, generate little to no heat, right? Okay, so just got a quick question. Are you are are we going over the batteries or will you be going over inverters and controllers? Yeah, so so the purpose of this is to introduce the the offerings of the batteries. Um this is just part of a background, um, but we will get there here shortly. All right. Like we're still doing good time here, so we're moving along. Okay, so <clears throat> on the left-hand side, you you have a lead calcium plate. On the right, a pure lead plate, and uh, this is based on a AFL or accelerated float life testing. 
And you can see how the lead calcium grid shows mechanical failure um, on just 320 days versus the pure lead grid is over 400 days of testing and has its grid fully intact. So as you can see, the, the um, uh, lead calcium has a long formed in, in its grid that, uh, is, uh, that got developed by oxidation um, that you know, created that mechanical failure. Uh, here on the left-hand side, uh, we have the uh, shelf life graph followed by the uh, float life chart. So the red is a TPPL battery. You can tell how under these conditions, it provided us 24 months versus six months. Or on the right-hand side, it provided us shy of 20 years of float life versus 14 years for a lead calcium battery. So there's a a significant amount of increase in life. And on the left here, we have uh, the water loss uh, with pure versus lead calcium. So you can see how the pure lead, the water loss, uh, loss is at a much lower rate versus the lead tin, you know, and again, that's because of the higher efficiency um, and, and how it can um, um, a recombine uh, internally those gases back into into uh, electrolyte. On the right um, we have the relationship between amps and temperature while charging for lead calcium versus lead. So you can see how the the uh, at the bottom is the amps and the top is the temperature so it, it is increased for the um, lead calcium versus TPPL you know pretty in par. Okay, um, here's the last slide before we jump into the energy storage portfolio. So we so we talked about you know briefly on on on, on different applications and how those batteries have you know been changing over years you know improving to uh, keep up with the demand and whatnot. Um, thin plate pure lead is one way to to uh, go towards that direction. Now, on, to, on, on the other hand, um, we also uh, have a battery option that has the thin plate pure lead benefits, but with an added, um, um, a carbon additive into the negative plate. What is carbon, uh, you may say? Well, carbon is a additive that gets mixed in with a negative active material paste. Um, and why is it important? Well. As you may recall, we talked about how many um, um, how many we 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 talked about you know how the the nature of certain applications um, <clears throat> may 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 cause the batteries to stay in a partial state of charge in a prolonged periods of time. So this causes a negative effect, and it's where a a uh, carbon addition can come in and help um, help with that. So in other words, when you have an application that keeps the battery discharged for a long period of time is when a battery will start to develop what is called a crystalline de uh, uh, crystalline deposits. And these crystalline deposits, they start to grow kind of like a virus. They, they'll start to grow or like a rust. That's a better um, example. That rust will start to grow throughout the plate um, and overall if that rust takes over the entire plate well you have a dead plate right and there's two types of, of uh, these uh, uh, deposits the first one is a deposit that can be reversed by a EQ charge or a, or a high voltage charge for a long period of time the second type is a hard uh, crystalline deposit that cannot be broken down and that effect cannot be reversed. At that point, the batteries no longer can be in service. Um, so what does the carbon do? Well, the carbon is a um, additive that attempts to reverse this condition before it happens. Um, so it's, it's an assurance that, you know, when you keep a battery discharge, for long periods of time, it, it, it starts to uh, work its 
it's um, um, a reversal process um, through the carbon additive. So, you know, once someone told me that H doesn't cause sulfation, boredom does. You know, so if you have your battery sitting there doing nothing, well, they're most likely getting sulfated. You know, so um, number one rule is to make sure that those batteries are fully charged, right? They're not being used. Okay, um, we're gonna jump into the energy storage portfolio and we're gonna do just one more poll here. Okay, so that was one minute. And uh, looks like we have the majority of, of you guys are in the process of deciding what which battery to go to. And 32% are going to uh, lithium iron phosphate and AGM VRLA, followed by flooded lead acid, and then Lastly, lithium, iron, or uh, lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good divorce. Cool. Alrighty. So let's uh, jump back into our energy storage portfolio. Uh, so just a quick background. Um, so North Star Battery, um, a company, was recently acquired by Enersys. So we are all one big family now. <laughs> So, so the Blue Plus batteries, you know, have been first introduced back in late November, and since then they have been <clears throat> become the staple product for our small to medium um, uh, systems. You know, um, they they offer, you know, uh, we do offer uh, a capacity range between 40 amp hours to 210 amp hours, and all in the front terminal form factor, as you can see here. Um, the, the, the chase, the, the case is just a little bit different, you know, some may, may be not as tall, others not as deep, um, but we do have the data sheet for those if, if you'd like to know more about those. Um, it, these batteries offer 2,050 cycles at 50% DLD. Uh, this battery is, it does have its proprietary thin plate pure lead uh, technology or TPPL that provides increased plate surface area and high energy density. Uh, the carbon added it um, uh, to the negative plate increases power and also um, reduces sulfation. So here's here's a, the kicker. Um, ultra fast recharge with no current limit allows design flexibility and maximized solar harvest. So this battery has no current limit. So you can charge as as much as you can with this in this battery on a single string. Um, so you can have 10 radians, five radians. You can charge a single string. There's no limit. The batteries will self-regulate how much current they can take at the end of 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 the uh, bulk cycle, and then it will have then it'll taper down, you know, down to the end amps value. But initially, for the bulk, um, there is no limit on that. So gives you a flexibility. You know, when you have a large system but don't have the budget for a big battery system, you can start with one string, 
and in the future go up to three or four strings. Um, <clears throat> so the best service life and up to two years of shelf life. Yeah, so you know this this great uh, the two shelf life. You know it, it's great for two reasons. Um, for distributors, obviously, if if you want to buy them and stock them in your warehouse, well, they can last for two years without the need to you even worry about it or do a, a boost charge, um, this and that. For installers, um, we all know that you know sometimes jobs don't go as smooth as, as they used to. So, um, you know, having that uh, deployment uh, uh, flexibility is really good in case they have to sit in the warehouse until the job gets approved then we can take them on site and finish the project um you know the a white temperature you know negative 40 c up to 149 c a three-year warranty um and we are pending a ul 9540 so that's coming um it's going to be great for folks in california and hawaii that this is going to become a, a requirement so this whole system with with an IBR and the Blue Plus, um, all going to be uh, listed for UL 9540. And of course, at the end of end of its life, everything you know, you can call uh, call us or call your uh, a local um, a recycler, and they can come out, pick them up, and give you some some scrap money for uh, for the lead. And these are made in the U.S. We stock these in Swanee, Georgia. Um, usually, they ship, you know, within a week, um, if not sooner. So, if you want batteries quick um, that are great for off-grid, you know, or um, backup, this this is a good battery for that. Uh, sorry, I was getting some messages. Can you see the slides now? Okay, great, perfect. Sorry about that. Sometimes the polls uh, kind of they, they get stuck up there. Okay, so moving on. So uh, speaking of the Blue Plus batteries, um, uh, here's a system example currently deployed in Springfield, uh, Missouri, designed for peak demand response. Um, the, the system is composed of over 1,100 individuals, 12 volt batteries configured in two strings of 1,000 volts DC using the NSB 210FT Blue Plus batteries that was originally commissioned in 2017 and ever since been working flawlessly. So, you know, these are two containers that were completely sourced by North Star, installed by North Star, um, and also commissioned. Um, and the aesthetics are just amazing. I, you know, me being a, a LED geek, you know, I, I look at this and I just, I love it, you know, it looks great. Um, so you have two aisles. Each aisle is is one string of a thousand volts, um, and then they have the power electronics on a on a different container. But this is just just for the energy storage. Here's another example. Um, this is um, uh, based in the Ozark Mountains in Missouri. Uh, this time they're using ten uh, stacked radians that is up to 80 kilowatts with uh, six 48 volt strings of the NSB Blues two volt batteries. Um, and it's really designed to be a self consumption with battery backup, you know, with all this, uh, all this equipment. Uh, and this mansion actually, it's, it's actually very, uh, very interesting if you have a time to, to read more about it. It's made all from concrete. But uh, just to give you an idea, it is over 72,000 square feet um, total, uh, and and the White House is about 55,000 square feet as a reference. So this kind of gives you an idea how big this place is. Um, 
it's it's really amazing it, it's really cool there's 92 acres um worth of property there that it's owned it's been working ever since so so it's good to hear that all right so we're going to move on to our next battery um this is our energy cell polr pure lead runtime this is also a thin plate pure lead battery um, we only offer one model which is a 200 amp hour front terminal uh, this battery offers 1500 cycles at 50 percent dld um, offers 15 year of uh, standby life so it means that it can stick, sit in float for 15 years before it, it, it hits its end of life um, and again as we talked about the pure lead you know reduces corrosion high charge rate current acceptance with no limit um, again with the no limit um, uh, current acceptance gives you that flexibility um, into oversizing the charger uh, 18 month shelf life at 25c um, and the jars are ul 95v0 so they're um, a flame retardant uh, uh, and the, the uh, Blue Plus and also the PLR are also in route to get it, Euro 9540 listed. So look for that, um, it's coming soon. All right, now this is a, an exciting new battery option that we have introduced also not too long ago. It's the XLC AGM VRLA plus carbon high capacity. So this is a um a battery cell that is AGM VRLA that has the carbon additive that we talked about but is in a high capacity format um so so this battery can support up to uh, 1220 amp hours at the C100 rate and you can stack up to 3 of them if you want to increase capacity that's that's the recommended amount of systems you can stack. Um, the standard cell configuration is four by six. Unfortunately, that's the only standard that we have. Um, if you do not want the rack, you want to build your own rack, there is ways for us to just sell you the cell um, and you can configure them in a different configuration. But you know, this is how we are offering um, this uh, complete solution. Um, so this also comes with a negative um, additive in the native plate. So it you know, has those benefits with partial state of charge and all those things. Uh, modular design saves on insulation time. So as you can see, there is four different modules that are stacked on top of each other and then bolted down. So each one of these modules um, can be uh, hinged or with, you know, or pulled up from a, a tool and then stacked um, um, on top of each other. I've, I've seen people use like A-frame um, or some type of hydraulic tool that can uh, I'll lift them up, um, you know, or you can pull the cells each um, individually if, if, if there's no um, space issues. Um, also, so the, the, the whole system comes with with an Outback branded steel cabinet. So what you see here is exactly how it comes. In addition, there there are covers that cover the all these connections. Um, so there's four panels that get screwed in. So it's all like you know, all in one piece. You don't even know what it is. It kind of just looks like a um, like an appliance, you know, or a tool shed that's in your garage. So it aesthetically it looks really cool. Um, the other nice thing about this is that it, it only extends about 45% less um, than a traditional system saving on, on uh, splice floor. And I do have a drawing uh, showing the, um, the uh, differences between that. So, you know, for those of you that have um, uh, areas that don't have much footprint or floor space, you know, this might be um, an option for you to save some of that space. A 10-year warranty, um, that, that's a standard, uh, a full replacement. Um, and when you pair the XLC with the FlexPower Radian System Edge package together, you get a 10-year warranty all around. 
you know, so you get the battery uh, 10 years and the power electronics 10 years. So, you know, that allows you to have that extra, you know, peace of mind with everything having that um, warranty period with no additional cost. And again, you know, the whole materials can be uh, recycled being red. Um, and this guy also, we do stock, so we can have this out the door um, shipped within one to two weeks. So nice. Okay, um, running a little bit out of time, so I'm going to go a little bit quicker. But um, so here on the right is is the XLC, how you can see how they're stacked, you know, one by one. Um, each each one of these modules, um, they weigh about 1,000 pounds. Um, so you, you would mount some eye bolts on each corner with some straps, and then, you know, you can lift them with, with a tool. Um, so what that means is that, if you have the proper tools, you can save up to 40% and in insulation time if you go that route. Um, also, you don't have to worry about missing components, missing hardware, because everything is, um, um, if, in case you haven't seen one of these, but we shipped one crate um, empty with nothing else except all the hardware. So we, we want to make sure that nothing gets loose or you know binged up or whatever um, so that everything when you're on site you have everything that you need um, great aesthetics you know um, and uh, not and uh, non-conductive putting to the front panels for added safety yeah so once you close the doors in the front it's, it's not going to conduct any electricity so you're not going to weld your your cover to the front of the battery so that's going to be good to go Okay, so this is what I was talking about, how, you know, much space saving the XLC can provide. So here, um, from from the wall, against the wall, it'll give you about 21.18 inches depth versus like a DDM for a high capacity 1100 RE, it's about 37.5. Um, the old 1100 NC was 26.3. So you do gain that you know that uh, space there that's uh, uh, um, space floor only because it it is a little bit taller you know but for the most cases people can manage having the product being taller than to take more space you know uh, from the wall to the floor um, here's another example um, using blue ion simplify and discover um, you know 21.1 inches versus 14, Discover, 24 inches in the blue ion, and uh, eight inches for the Simplify. Okay, moving on to the high capacity RE batteries. So, um, you know, this battery has also been a staple um, with, um, with Outback. You know, it's, it's a go-to for, for high capacity batteries. Um, we do have a, um, a portfolio of different capacities ranging from 800 to 2700 um, amp hours. They offer 1800 cycles at 50% DOD, um, 80 year cycle life on standby or um, a standby float application. Um, and one thing that I wanted to focus on this is that we do sell standard um, uh, racks that they are configured at the factory. But if you have any special uh, like request, you know, like if you need a battery that needs to be like three by eight instead of four by six because you know your space is it's kind of limited, or if you want it like two by twelve, you know, just something crazy like that, we can customize um, these racks, um, you know, on on any of these capacities. So you know, keep. Keep that in mind. Um, the lead time may be a little bit longer, but you know, if if you just want to kind of run that exercise with us, um, I'll be more than happy to, to kind of help um, help you out on that. And these racks uh, also come um, as an optional with Zone Four um, seismic reading. So we have NEBS um, if, if if that or or UBC if if that's a um, a requirement. So apart from that, um, again, they're very flexible. 
the um, the uh, terminals they may be um, are configured at the standard top you know or the side so that can also be specified um, <clears throat> um, you know the the top the STD is probably the most common one that we sell um, and the bottom here it's the second most popular one that 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 people pick. It just depends, you know, like if we have a floor or other um, objects um, that cover those terminals and it makes sense to move, you know, to move them around. And here's some of the sizes, you know, how they will look like as far as height. Here's four feet. There's a 24 volt configuration. There's a 48 volt um, a configuration so you can see how um, they do get a little bit taller once you go with 48 volts because we have double the cells on each system okay so we're moving on to the FLA batteries so these are the um, flooded lead acid batteries that we've sold for some time and you know it's, it's been very popular in in areas in Latin America and Alaska and um, um, down in Hawaii, you know, they're, these are considered to be, you know, are very um, economical but robust, um, you know, battery. Um, you know, folks like to be hands-on. You know, they they're old school. They they like to stick with a battery a a battery technology that has been proven and and worked for them for 20 plus years. Then this is the way to go. The, one nine, the 295 with 1200, uh, 1200 amp hours uh, or 200 cycles is considered to be like a T105 K size. The 525 is considered to be like an L16 size. Um, and the 1400 is, you know, just a tall two volt cell. So, you know, these offer between 200 to 22 to 2800 cycles. Um, so it's, you know, it's not as, not as great as like the TPPL plus carbon batteries, but you know they're pretty in par, and you know they're 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 great for uh, you know starters. Um, I also wanted to talk about the uh, kit options that we offer for the FLAs. Um, so when you buy FLA batteries, you know they come as is. There's no interconnects or wiring systems or racks or tubs or anything. But we do sell this additional um, self-watering enclosure kit that comes with a 2.5 gallon water uh, tank, a bonnet, water hoses, case, straps, and interconnect cables. All comes in, in, in one kit. So all you have to do is you know make the connections and mount the tank, and it's pretty much you know good to go. You know it's a turnkey solution for folks that you know want to save a few bucks and don't like the idea of maintaining the battery. So this system will extend that um, uh, free maintenance uh, uh, cycles. Um, at this point, um, we do sell the 525 FLA. We, we do have that in stock. The, 520, the 925 is made to order. So if you call our sales guys, you know, um, you might expect a difference in lead times between the 9. 925 and a 295, but we do have them available on both. Okay, so um, we jump into the high capacity um, uh, top terminal batteries. So this one offers uh, 650 cycles at 50% DLD. Again, this is the North Star battery. It's a thin plate pure lead, a TPPO. Um, so it, it does have that more cost you know because of the tppl compared to another one that we're about to show here here um short uh, shortly so this is great you know we we have them in 90 and 125 amp hours in the top terminal battery so the the main uh, takeaway on this battery is that unlike the cycle life you know that is 650 but it means that it can operate in a temperature of uh, 65 C or sorry up to 40 C because um, that's that's what it's rated power uh, versus the 25 that you're used to 
So this battery is designed for like outside uh, plant, um, you know, applications where they're constantly outside and the temperature swings quite a bit, you know, from cold to hot. So this battery is designed to do that. Lastly, we have the Energy Cell TT. This is a battery that it's currently being developed um, and we are expecting it to be released by end of this year. Um, it's, it's more of the um, economical side of a front, um, uh, front terminal battery. It's gonna be about 116 amp hours and 115 amp hours at C100. Our group sizes is 27 and 31. They will offer 500 cycles at 50% DLD, 12 year standard life, 12 month shelf life. Um, and, I, and again, this, also, this battery is also, you know, comes from the outside plant, inside plant um, world where um, a temperature is not controlled and it gets cycled quite a bit. So, you know, this battery can, can perform well in, in, uh, in our applications. Okay, so um, sorry if um, we're kind of going beyond, but I promise this is uh, like third to last slide. So if we have to go, go ahead. <clears throat> um, so this is the application guide um, with, with all of our battery offerings that we just kind of went through one by one. And here on the left is what the applications could fit that battery. Um, so if we go one one by one, so the red MTTs, you know, they're great for off grid or grid tied, um, and or mobile marine. You know, uh, keep in mind that these are low cycling batteries, but the price does make a big difference on that. So if you want something inexpensive that can cycle, that can flow, that can do all that, then you know that's the great battery. The Blue Plus, again, this it's our staple product and everyone loves it. It's very, it's very versatile. It can do just about everything. It can do off-grid. Um, it can do energy management, you know, with non-export, mobile marine, AC coupling, uh, tier rates, time of use. Um, <clears throat> the PLR uh, is designed more for like a backup application with maybe minimal cycling here and there. So we have it as grid tie with battery backup. AC coupling and mobile marine. FLA, you know, kind of like starting battery, um, off grid. It's 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 a great um, start, and or uh, mobile marine. The high cap REs, off grid, obviously, grid type battery backup, um, AC coupling, and you know some commercial uh, applications. XLC, great for off grid. Uh, time uh, time of use, tier rates. Uh, AC coupling um, and uh, non-export or even commercial. So here's some ideas that kind of kind of get you going as to where you might want to head towards on each one of one of these batteries. Sorry about that. Okay, so quickly uh, system solution. So we kind of talked about you know uh, joining Enersys um, because they have really good energy storage options joining with Alpha because they have all the power electronics for broadband and whatnot, and Outback Power because we offer all the power electronics for off-grid, um, you know, grid-tied. So we all kind of got together, married, and then came up with, you know, System Edge that brings all those um, all those synergies together um, and offer you a one system, one SKU, one port number uh, a system. It kind of looks like this, really um fully pre-wired you know uh system inverter battery rack you know the warranty boost is great a distributor so there's you don't have to stock any of this it's it it's all you know shipped direct from the factory installers you know there's uh, minimal um design because it's all designed for you you because they're all pre-packaged and end users you know well we have the built um um you know the they're pretty reliable and um, pretty good warranty right over 10 years so here are some examples um, energy management energy backup off-grid and AC, AC couple applications so feel free to you know uh, go into our website and look under system and solutions 
and you know um, all these are the systems that we offer that we have in stock um, a lot of these again they have a one or two week lead time um, so if you need this quick then we can get those for you